Thanks for coming to this session. Um, my name is Kerr. I'm working for server landing team and ARM. Uh, mainly focus on the ARM server ecosystem related work. Today I'm going to talk about uh, a tuning practice for self cluster on ARM servers. This is the uh, agenda. <coughs> Firstly, I will give a short introduction about uh, self-architecture. And uh, next, uh, I will talk about uh, testing cluster. Uh, considering TCO, we set up a four HDD self-cluster, only use the SSD and the database, uh, which offers an optimal balance between capacity performance and uh, cost. After that, uh, I will g give a talk about uh, self-tuning, uh, including hardware, software, OS, and uh, self-configuration. And the last, uh, uh, we select a typical case, four kilobytes sequential write case. I will give a detailed uh, tuning practice for this case. <coughs> Ceph is a uni unified storage uh, which provides an application with object, block, and uh, uh, file system interface. Ceph uses a crash algorithm to determine how objects are distributed in the OSD. Uh, and the OSD is a key component in the Ceph cluster which is responsible for storing data on disk. Uh, and also handle replication, recovery, and uh, rebalance. And uh, there are many backends for the OSD, such as uh, file store, blue store, and uh, other backends. And the uh, blue store writes the data to the disk uh, directly and uh, use a uh, RocksDB to store the metadata. Uh, for our testing cluster, we will use a uh, blue star and the uh, backend. This is our testing cluster. We have three ARM servers, user and the three nodes. For each node, we have 64 cores, and the bandwidth is 10 GPBS. And uh, we have 11 HDD disk, one used for OS, and uh, another 10 used for OSD. And uh, we have one SSD used on the database. For the software, we use uh, self-release Nautilus on CentOS. For the benchmark tool, we use uh, FRO for our cluster, after installation, we can see that 10 HDD will act as 10 OSD, and the one SSD is cut into 10 pieces as the OSD database. Uh, then we got a 30 OSD self cluster with SSD as a database. Next, uh, I want to talk about uh, tuning from four aspects, hardware, self-software, OS, and uh, self-configuration. For the hardware tuning, um, in the recent years, the disk has been developed from HDD to SATA SSD and to NVMe SSD. The latency of uh, HDD is about uh, 10 milliseconds and the latency of SATA SSD about uh, 0 0.1 millisecond. About 100 percent, uh, about 100 times improvement. And uh, the bandwidth of NVMe are also improved uh, several times compared to SATA interface. And uh, for the network, in the recent years, the bandwidth has been 
increased uh, from 10 GPPS to 40 and to 100. So in general, um, based on different workload and uh, different block size, uh, you can choose some hardware to upgrade. You will get a better performance. And the uh, TCO is also a consideration. For the self software tuning, which include uh, self and SPTK optimizations, actually, our OSS team did a lot of work for these items. For the self part, uh, some fundamental algorithms are optimized with NEON and specific extensions. And uh, some crypto algorithms and uh, some storage library, such as ICL, are also optimized. And uh, for the SPDK part, if you are using the NVMe SSD, you will use a SPDK interface. Uh, which which are also optimized uh, from the software level. Uh, if you want to use these optim optimizations, please get a newer version of Ceph and SPDK if possible. For the OS tuning, we usually implemented uh, by adjusting some some parameters in the kernel for disk related. Um, uh, our scheduler is a key point in our parts. We usually set the uh, deadline algorithms for the HDD and set the NOOP algorithms for the SSD. And uh, for the swapness, uh, considering the memory usually is sufficient in nowadays. We suggest uh, turning off the swap. For the size of read ahead, which means uh, how many kilobytes of data will be read in advance, which is useful to sequen sequential read case. Uh, for the network related, enabling jump frames can improve the throughput and the network performance. And there are many network related parameters in the kernel, uh, such as the buffer, buffer size and the buffer memory and so on, uh, which we can adjust based on different workload and the different block size. Mm, and sometimes, how to distribute interrupt to all calls is important for the network performance. Mm. For the self-configuration tuning, we mainly focus on the blue star related parameter. Uh, for the blue star cache, just like the page cache in the file system, which is very important uh, which is very Im important for the performance. The default value is four gigabytes. Uh, we should increase it within the system's tolerance. And uh, starting from the release Luminous, Ceph introduced a new feature named uh, Blue Star Cache Auto Tuning, which is enabled by default. In most uh, cases, it works well. But uh, in some special cases, if you can disable this feature and uh, set the KV and the match ratio manually based on special workload, you will get a better performance. And the last is the RocksDB option. Uh, Rock RocksDB plays an important role in the blue star. Sometimes adjusting parameters in the RocksDB can improve the performance a lot. This is our benchmark test.
testing, we select uh, four cases. Uh, after analyze the statistics, we we find the hotspot and the bottleneck, and uh, I will give a tuning direction briefly. For the first case, four kilobytes sequential write case, from the logs we can see uh, SSD is a hotspot, and the SSD uh, is a database of RocksDB. So we, we we consider tuning it from the RocksDB level. For the four kilobytes random write case, from the logs we can see the HDD usage is are almost 100%. So HDD is a bottleneck. So we consider tuning it from our scheduler level. For the four megabytes sequential and random write case, network is a bottleneck. So we can tune it from the network level. I will give a detailed tuning practice for the first case four kilobytes sequential write case. For this case, the left graph is a test of latency ratio between Blue Star and the OSD common part. From the test result, we can see that when using SATA SSD and the database, Blue Star takes up most of time. So if we can improve the performance of Blue Star, we can improve the performance of our whole Ceph cluster. And uh, RocksDB is a key point in the Blue Star. And based on previously testing, we can see SSD is a hotspot. So we will, we will focus on the RocksDB tuning. And the right graph is a RocksDB architecture. All writes to the RocksDB will be first inserted into an in-memory data structure named the mem table. When this table is full, we will create a new one and mark the old one read-only. The read-only mem tables will be merged and flushed to the storage. This is a basic logic of RocksDB. For this case, after we adjust uh, some parameters in the RocksDB, we got a 10% improvement on the performance. Let's see the parameter briefly. The max write buffer number set the maximum number of mem table, both active and read only. The write, the write buffer size set the size of mem table. The mean write buffer number to merge set the minimal number of mem table to be merged before flashing to the storage. So in general, we give the more memory to the mem, mem table and uh, adjust the threshold for flushing so the performance is improved. Actually, uh, RocksDB is very complex. Du tuning at RocksDB is often a trade-off between three amplification factors, write amplification, read amplification, and space amplification. If you are interested in this part, you can capture some RocksDB logs and uh, analyze it deeply. Okay, that's all for my session. Thank you. <laughs> Any question? Uh, sorry? I follow, yeah. Uh, 
uh, this is for sequential right case. Yeah. Uh, for example, for four kilobytes random write, we can see the HDD utility are almost 100 percent. This one. So it, HDD are uh, the usage of, of HDD are almost 100 percent. So HDD is a bot bottleneck. Uh, yeah. Have a try with the CPU using. Which which CPU? Sorry. Sorry. I say yeah. Yeah. And for the for the last case, the bandwidth of network are almost ten Gbps. So network is a bottleneck. Uh, next is next page. Uh, next page. Uh, I think you have told the parameters to increase the parameters of the uh, to value of the four parameters. And uh, after that, to ask, the, uh, have you ever tried other numbers to be a bigger value? To, for example, if you want to. Yeah. Uh, yes. The second uh, parameter is mean write uh, buffer number to version. And yeah. if you want, if you set it to four or maybe even larger, uh, maybe and add a scale, get a curve, get a curve about this. Uh, we tried a one, two, and a four. Uh, actually, uh, there is a balance between the input and the output. Uh, for 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 the rocks DB, the, the mem table is in the memory, just like the pipeline. Uh, the write is the input, and the flush into the storage is the output. You should uh, consider the balance between the input and the output. Actually, we tried one, uh, one, two, and four. Uh, if set to one, the performance is the best. And uh, actually, the rocks DB is very complex. There are many parameters. Uh, Yeah, you have a lot of CPU calls available. Could you uh, look into optimization of them to say how many were actually used for the whole process? Uh, CPU usage. Uh, actually, the CPU usage is very low because we have 64 calls, and the the bottleneck is uh, almost uh, H, uh, HDD disk and the network. Uh, the u CPU usage are, are about uh, ten percent utility. Okay, but of the sixty-four calls, could you get away with eight calls, or uh, the sixty-four just because that's what came in the system? Yeah, uh, yeah. If you're trying to optimize your storage, you don't just want to buy sixty-four core servers to to do a set storage buffer. If an eight core server with the same amount of memory would be sufficient for those optimizations? Uh, I think the CPU and the memory are all sufficient for, for storage, for, for our case. Sorry. <laughs> okay. Which type of uh, network cards were you using in this? Sorry? Who, who made the network cards in the system? Were they just the onboard ones? 
network card. Yes. Uh, actually, we use a uh, uh, Tasha Huawei uh, servers. Okay. The, the use the default. The default NIC in the in the Taishans? Yeah. Taking you zoom with the old ones, concept, concept? Which, which, which generation? Yeah. What we say? Uh, for the VBA map. Yeah, it's a 2280. Yeah, yeah. And the Yeah, 1660. Yeah, 1660. Yeah, 1660. Yeah, uh, formula about how to set it automatically, and uh, between the maybe between you know, the number of the discs and uh, the uh, and uh, how blocks will be running, and so you get a formula if you can not okay. just uh, experience a uh, simple experience, so we can automatically set or used by others. So uh, okay, I can set to in my future plan. Related question to the networking, did you try uh, pinning <coughs> IRQs to specific cores on one NUMA node to try and route all of the networking traffic to fixed locations instead of just having the kernel randomly assign that? Uh, yeah, it would be, it would be due to build all the uh, interruption to one to CPU card, the, the that CPU will be the bottom left. Because right. it can't uh, handle all the network traffic. So, um, based, on our, our, based on our past experience, uh, we generally we are distribute uh, the interrupt to all to all the all the CPU car. Uh, but, but by doing this, we can fully uh, make use of the cache. And uh, yeah, I think this this would be a good idea if the. Uh, if the workload is distributed on uh, 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 many cars, so the interrupts uh, should be also distributed. Yeah. I, I know some of the drivers, I don't remember exactly which driver the Taishan uh, network card uses, but I know some of the drivers. HMS3. No. Which one? Okay. HMS3. No, okay. sorry, it's HMS. HMS3 is D206. Oh, oh HMS. So the old one. Yeah. So some of them allow you to, to allocate um, rings to different CPUs, and that dramatically increases network throughput because you can basically take the different rings coming out of the network card and have one CPU deal with each one. So if you're dealing with 40 gig or even 100 gig, you can spread that load out to very specific CPUs, and because they are then pinned to those CPUs, you get a sig significant increases due to the cache itself. Okay, thank you. Any other questions? Okay, thanks very much.